Hey guys, how are you? Today I'm going to be reading some travel blogs for you all about the south of France I don't really have any plans to travel at the moment but I've had that travel bug most of my life and it's been a while since I've been anywhere and even if I did have the capacity to travel right now I wouldn't even know where to go so I thought it'd be a good idea to start reading some travel blogs and maybe some lonely planet guides and just start learning what's out there in the world now I could probably make a million of these types of videos so if you have any plans or just an interest in any particular places please leave it in the comments and I will try to do a video on those places as well otherwise I'll just pick some places that appeal to me let's get into it oh but before we do start I'm gonna do my best to pronounce all of these French words, it's not going to be easy. So if you are French, try not to hate me. So this first one I have here is a blog called Oliver's Travels. I'm just looking at the pictures already, look at that. Where is that? That doesn't even look real. Didn't even notice the ocean in the background there. Wow. If you know where that is, let me know. With its balmy summer days, picturesque beaches, and rustic countryside, it's no surprise the south of France is one of the world's most popular destinations. It's certainly one of our favorites. We've put together our top tips some handy blogs and great ideas for things to do in a south of France travel guide. When is the best time to visit? While there's never really a bad time to visit the south of France, it's a good idea to plan when you go with the weather in mind. Spring can actually be a bit unpredictable, especially with the rain. Those April showers even extend to the Côte d'Azur. So if you're after a tan topping stay with more time in the pool, plan your trip between May and October. The days are much longer then too. Peak season in France is July and August, so be aware that if you go then, you'll be one of a huge number of tourists. But that also means it's prime time for festivals and fairs. What regions should you visit? So this is good actually, it's a map showing all the areas. What is that? It's a little island, is it? French Riviera. I've heard of the French Alps. So they've got a little guide here for what each region is known for. Bordeaux and Aquitaine, great for Vineyards, foie gras, duck, and wine tasting. Dordogne, great for wine, foie gras, truffles, and market towns. Midi Pyrenees, great for skiing, wine, and festivals. French Riviera, great for Mediterranean style beaches, Nice, Saint Tropez, Cannes, yachting and festivals. The Provence Alps, great for mountains to the Mediterranean, Boulabas, Provence and Avignon. The 
Yeah, I'm not too interested in trying foie gras, but I could imagine going to some vineyards and doing some wine tasting would be really nice. I don't even really drink much wine as it is because it gives me headaches, but doing some wine tasting, just having a sip or two, you know, that'd be really nice. And in France, it'd be pretty amazing. Market towns, I always like that. Skiing, I'm not very good at skiing, but I would love to do it again. Festivals, I don't exactly know what festivals they're talking about, but hopefully learn a bit more about that. Obviously, I want to check out the beaches. I'm a bit spoiled for beaches because where I live, but I always love being there, wherever I am. And these places, Saint-Tropez and Cannes, definitely want to check those out. And the mountains, that sounds nice to me, but it depends how high we're talking and how easy they are to climb. And if there were some really amazing views, that would be pretty great. Bulabas, off the top of my head, I can't remember what that is, but I'm sure it's some kind of food. I do like food, so wherever there's good food, I think I'd be happy. How do you get around the south of France? Public transport? One of the world's fastest trains can be found in France and runs between all of the major cities. By bike? France is well known for its bike-friendly culture. Very European. And you'll find many good cycling routes. It's also a great way to experience the less touristy parts of the region and makes a great alternative to driving everywhere. Most cities have bike-sharing schemes for a reasonable price. Monaco's even includes electric bikes to combat the big hills and also hiring a car. So what are the best things to see and do? I'm always so taken with old school architecture like that. It looks good in the photo, but I imagine being there in real life would be really breathtaking. Want to check out an artist's self-confessed masterpiece? Towards the end of his life, Henri Matisse helped design the Chapelle du Rosaire in Vents, which is now considered one of the most important religious buildings constructed in the 20th century. How about a palace built by a postman? This is one site that's not soon forgotten. Postman Chevelle spent 33 years building his palace Ideal in Oterive using stones he'd collected during his rounds. The result is a beautiful and highly eccentric piece of work. All is full of incredible Roman history. I would like that. Including an amphitheatre and forum plus some impressive 17th century mansions. However, Arles is largely known as the place where Van Gogh lost his ear, with the Van Gogh exhibition erected in his honour. Le Palais des Papes in Avignon proudly holds the title of the biggest Gothic palace in Europe. That sounds cool. This spectacular 14th century site is a must-see if you're a history buff but you can't help but be fascinated simply by the sheer size of the place. With origins dating to Julius Caesar's defeat of Mark Anthony and Cleopatra in Egypt, the historic amphitheatre of Nima is well worth a visit, once serving as a destination for enjoying epic shows. It's now one of the most well-preserved places from our ancient past. The striking Gorge du Verdon acts as France's very own Grand Canyon, 
Make a day of it by enjoying a walk around the spectacular scenery, or hire a canoe and take to the water to fully appreciate the canyon from a whole new angle. If you're looking to challenge yourself, try hiking the Gorge du Verdon. They're definitely not for beginners, so make sure you're confident and kitted up accordingly. Nearby you can also explore the hilltop village of Moustier Saint Marie and its fragrant fields of lavender. If luxury experiences are more your thing, we have you covered with our 10 luxurious experiences. Might have to check that out as well. So guys, I just wanted to take a couple of minutes to talk about the sponsor of this video. It's very exciting for me to have a sponsor. It's a jewelry company called Anna Luisa. I'm actually wearing a couple of the pieces here that they sent to me, which is nice. I agreed to work with them because they are purposely sustainable and ethical in their practices. I like when brands think about their impact on the environment. We can do our part as individuals, but we really need businesses to also do their part and keep striving to do better. And Anna Louise are committed to that and they're affordable. Just looking at the website, I find the designs to be really delicate and feminine, but they do have different styles. I have this one, the Rowena necklace little flower necklace. The chain's really dainty. Makes it very elegant. And also this number necklace in gold. Can you see? It's the number 12. It's for my dog. His name is 12 -y. I love this so much. I don't have many sentimental things in my life, so I want to keep it forever. So you can see it's two-year warranty and Every single piece of jewellery is rigorously tested and guaranteed to be long-lasting, so no tarnishing, hypoallergenic, and water-resistant. So you won't get those green marks, which is good because I don't really plan on taking it off. I think I could wear it with anything. I don't really like them layered like this. And since they're selling direct to the consumer online, there's no retail markup. And it's also free shipping if you're in the US because they're based in New York. But they do ship globally and that's very affordable too. So if you're looking for some beautiful and eco-friendly jewellery for yourself or maybe a loved one, maybe you want to check out Anna Luisa. And they have very generously provided a link that will give you a 30% discount, which I'll put in the description below. So definitely take advantage of that if you find something you like. So thank you Anna Luisa for sponsoring my video. Anyway, let's get back into it. What are the best things to eat? Bulabas is the obvious one here. A traditional fish stew dish that originated in Marseille. There's a reason it's the most popular dish on the Côte d'Azur. Pistou soup is made with a French take on pesto mixed with white beans, tomatoes and green beans. It's traditionally enjoyed in the summer, making use of only the finest fresh ingredients. That sounds pretty good. If you spot it, try a slice of pizza la this half-Mediterranean, half-French pizza has a thick, doughy base that's covered in heaps of sautéed onions, anchovies and olives. So that's what that would look like. I would try it. I would. But I'm not crazy about anchovies. I don't mind them, actually. In the right thing. I think I just don't like the idea of them. I never buy them, I never add them to anything that I've made, but I have had them in other food I've eaten. I like olives, and I like pizza. 
is so much to know you guys South of France for families While the South of France is perhaps best known for its fresh produce fine wines and ancient sites it also makes a perfect place for your family holiday you'll be surprised by the wealth of things to do with kids all year round that looks like apple picking I'd do that eating an apple like fresh off the tree they've got a Monaco aquarium get up close and personal with all the creatures of the deep I guess that's it but you can do that anyway, you know? Fruit picking. That's what we like. Fruit picking at Domaine Natura is a great excuse to get younger kids out in the open air and teach them about where our food comes from in a fun way. Not to mention being able to munch on the freshest fruit while you're at it. They got a zoo. Again, you could do that anyway. Oh, this sounds cool. A fantastic fun way to let off some steam as a family. La Forêt de Acrobat. It's full of assault courses, zip wires and climbing walls. But yeah, I guess you could do that anywhere as well. Dinosaur Museum. I think I'd rather just take my kids to the beach or something. The best walks. These south of France trails are just the ticket if you feel like stretching your legs in the great outdoors. Accessible by amateurs of all ages, they're ideal for seeing some fantastic sights. Just pack proper footwear and don't forget the picnic. So beautiful, look at that. That's like a really nice view for a hiking trail. Going underground where the cave of Rufignac d'Ordogna. This impressive trail leads through a series of caves detailing a fascinating history that spans from the Neanderthals to the French resistance. It's a fun five to seven hour trail and best suited to families with older kids. St. John Cup Ferrat hike in Nice in the Côte d'Azur. Smelling the fresh sea air and seeing the stunning sea views makes this three to four hour walking trail a delight for all the senses. Depending on how you're feeling, you can choose to walk either one or both of the peninsulas. Maybe that's what that image was before. And there's also Via Ferrata Balma Negra. That's at Rubion. 70 kilometers north of Nice. Climb to great heights on fixed rung systems in the mountains of Provence. Via Ferrata gives you the experience of rock climbing without the risk, with the route itself only covering 300 meters but still reaching an altitude of 1,450 meters. It's the perfect activity for adventurous families with no previous experience required. There's also a part here talking about the best golf courses, but I don't think I'm going to read that part, guys. Oh, that's the end of the article, actually. But I also wanted to just to see what it is all about, the 10 luxurious experiences that they had. Few destinations are as synonymous with luxury as the south of France. The Côte d'Azur, also known as the French Riviera, has earned its glamorous reputation with world-renowned cuisine, high fashion and breathtaking natural beauty. From its golden sand beaches lined with swaying palms, to its azure waters sprinkled with yachts. Not to mention Monaco, home to one of the most lavish sporting events in the world, with countless extravagant attractions and activities on offer. It's no wonder so many dream of a luxury holiday in the south of France. If you're keen to experience this lavish utopia for yourself, you may be wondering where to start. 
After all, you want to enjoy have the best possible experience when visiting such a prestigious destination. So they say, number one, go on a hot air balloon ride. Take to the skies on a hot air balloon to soak up the beauty of the south of France's countryside in all of its glory. In fact, soaring above the lavender fields or snow-capped mountains of the Pyrenees is one of the most enchanting luxury experiences to be had on your European getaway. Whether you seek an adrenaline fueled adventure or a romantic escapade, a hot air balloon journey promises a magical affair. Number two, sample some of the world's best caviar that as well. Luxury holidays in the south of France are never complete without an exquisite foodie experience and could there be a more fitting delicacy to sample during your trip than caviar? This part of the country, particularly the regions of Aquitaine and Sologne, is renowned for producing some of the best caviar in the world. Visitors can even tour the caviar farms to learn about the meticulous process of caviar production, making the experience both educational and indulgent. Tasting this world-renowned caviar is a must for any budding connoisseur on a luxury holiday in southern France. Number three, go truffle hunting in Provence. You can't mention extravagant eating without mentioning the truffle. The elusive fungus has a rich heritage and history in the south of France. With the prized black truffle even being named after the historic region of Perigord. As well as enjoying them in a variety of stunning dishes, why not take the experience to the next level and go truffle hunting yourself? Number four, is it the most expensive restaurant in the south of France? I would also love to do that. Just because, you know. As we've mentioned before, and undoubtedly will again, France boasts exemplary cuisine. If you really want to treat yourself and your special someone to a luxury treat during your getaway, why not visit one of the most expensive restaurants? in the south of France. And Sophie Pick is France's first female chef to be awarded three Michelin stars. Her restaurants offer unparalleled once-in-a-lifetime foodie experiences for those lucky enough to visit. Combining traditional French cooking techniques with exciting botanical touches and subversive flavour combinations, the dishes on offer at her lavish eateries are sure to take your breath away. Pig's signature dish makes the very best of the region's offerings. Sea bass with caviar, which was created by her father in the 70s. If you're seeking luxury experiences, it's hard to beat a visit to her exceptional eateries. Number five, go wine tasting. Another of the top luxury experiences to enjoy during your escape is wine tasting. After all, you need to brush up on your knowledge of wine to accompany your newfound love of gourmet cuisine. Luckily, the south of France is home to some of the best vintages and vineyards in the world. Number six, live it up on a yacht. Experience the epitome of luxury by renting a yacht and joining society's highest flyers in soaring the Mediterranean Sea. Whether you're hosting an intimate gathering or a grand celebration, the super and mega yachts on offer can accommodate 20 to 200 guests, providing the perfect setting for a glamorous cocktail tour of Côte d'Azur from Cannes to Saint-Tropez. Number seven, rent a luxury car. Speaking of transport, traveling around in style isn't solely for the seafaring sort. Rental agencies 
such as AAA rental cars, give you the opportunity to belt up and skirt around the stunning countryside of Nice and Montpellier in an Aston Martin, a Lamborghini, a Maserati, or a Rolls Royce. A plush rental car also gives you the freedom to go off the beaten track and visit quaint little villages and hamlets that you would otherwise miss out on during your holiday. Number eight, go flight seeing in a helicopter over the Riviera. It would be nice to have that kind of bird's eye view. If your lifestyle is already the epitome of luxury, sports cars and yachts might seem a little bit passé. The next step, naturally, is to move on to helicopters. While a private helicopter to whisk you to the nearest club's rooftop helipad might be a bit over the top, an aerial tour of the Cote d'Azur is much more affordable. Number 9. Try your luck in Monte Carlo. While there are so many luxury experiences on offer in the South of France, you simply cannot talk about a lavish trip to this destination without mentioning the legendary casinos of Monaco. The region's most famous district, Monte Carlo, is world-renowned for its grand establishments. A picture of opulence and excitement, the casinos are a playground for the creme de la creme of society. Paying a visit to these venues offers a quintessential taste of Monaco's ritzy, glitzy glamour. With casinos dotted all over the region, from town centres to beachfronts, you'll have your pick of establishments to choose from. Many venues, especially those in Monte Carlo, enforce a dress code which often requires you to wear elegant attire such as a stylish tuxedo or a classic LBD. And number 10, go for the ultimate package at the Monaco Grand Prix Lounge. Considering touring the south of France in the lap of luxury, you may wish to time your visit carefully so you can experience one of the world's most exclusive events the Monaco Grand Prix. Expect decadence galore as you rub shoulders with Hollywood's biggest names and business moguls while watching one of the most prestigious and glamorous events on the Formula One calendar. Does any of those stand out to you? There's a few that I might do in that. I do want to check out the 10 best beaches, but I'm kind of wanting to look at more of the French Riviera area because I'm interested in the little towns or cities, whatever they are, like Cannes and Saint-Tropez. So I'm going to switch over to this blog here called Salt in Our Hair. They've got a 12-day travel itinerary. It says the French Riviera, dazzling sea, sandy beaches, red and white candy-style parasols, and pastel-coloured towns. This part of South France truly feels like something out of a vintage film, so it's no surprise that it's been used as the setting for many Hollywood movies spend around two weeks in the French Riviera, getting lost in the old towns, smelling the lemons, enjoying the shade of palm trees, and watching the sailing boats bob on the sparkling Mediterranean. It's a vacation dream. They say it's easy to get around. Every town has its own unique wow factor, and the coastline is as pretty as a picture. I think this blog has a lot of pictures as well. I like seeing a lot of pictures. It really kind of helps mentally feel like you're there, you know? Well, look at this. I love that. I like how the windows are kind of a green or blue, whatever that is. And that must be the street signs there. That's just so pretty to me. I even love the like rustic look of the whatever that is, the 
paint. So day one to two, Masse. Masse is the best place to start your Côte d'Azur trip as the oldest city in France and the capital of the French Riviera. It's a romantic city with narrow alleys filled with pastel-coloured houses, flowers, and elegant ancient buildings. However, it's also dynamic and vibrant, with its street art, food markets, and modern architecture that pops out amongst the old. So cool. Look at that cool little bar there. Bar. 13 coins. I don't know what that is, but maybe they'll say. There are so many great things to do in Marseille itself. However, it's also a great jumping off point to visit some stunning natural wonders in the area, such as Kalunk National Park. Here you can hike along sheer cliffs and among dense greenery before reaching sheltered coves with stunning blue water. This is what the French Riviera is all about. The perfect combination of refreshing summer swims, warm nights, delicious dinners and city sightseeing. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Where to stay in Marseille? The best place to stay in Marseille is anywhere near the old port, View Port. It's right in the centre of the old town and the best place to stay to see the sights and be at the heart of the action of the city. Despite being in the deep south of France, Marseille is really well connected by train to other cities in France, as well as other cities in Europe. For example, you can take a train from London, Paris, Rotterdam, or Amsterdam. This is a fantastic slow way to travel, allowing you to see beautiful landscapes and be more sustainable. Marseille also has its own airport, which has flights leaving to many other international destinations. Look at that. I like the top part of that photo. With the cars, it makes it look too, like, normal, modern. Like, that's really pretty. Day three to four, Cassis. Cassis is just 30 minutes away from Marseille, but a whole world away from the bustling city life. When you arrive in Cassis, you'll immediately be transported to a slower pace of life and the beauty of the town is truly like something from an old painting. There are pastel-coloured houses that complement the charming harbour, and loads of delicious restaurants to choose from. Well, wow. Look at that beach. I kind of hate how busy it is, but it looks really nice. I wonder if you can jump off there. I'm really bad at jumping from waterfalls and stuff, but I really want to do it. So I'll stand there for like an hour, just psyching myself up to do it till I finally do. But look at that, there's so many people there. Food is very important here, and the small town is famous for its extensive market with beautifully locally sourced products. Grab your shopping bag and head here to buy the most delicious ingredients for your dinner. Cassis is small, but there are plenty of great places to stay. If you're looking for a little more luxury, there are some incredible hotels that sit high above the town on the surrounding cliffs with views of the sea. There are also local guest houses too which are the perfect place to stay, to be in the heart of Cassis. To be in the heart of Cassis. Look 
Cassis is only 30 minutes drive from Marseille, so use Marseille as your main hub for travel. You can travel to Cassis by train in 18 minutes for as little as 5 euros. And look, that's one of the markets. I could live in a place like that, you know? Day 5, Saint-Tropez. Saint-Tropez used to be a small fishing village popular with artists. Over the years it became known as a luxury destination. Now the colourful town is home to chic cafes, beautiful houses, and a harbour full of elegant yachts. One of the best things to do is come, people watch, and sit in one of the harbourside restaurants with a cocktail in hand. All of the beaches in Saint-Tropez are beautiful. The water here is a stunning turquoise colour that's reminiscent of a Caribbean island, perfect for a day of relaxing and swimming. Hire yourself the classic red and white parasol and live out your French Riviera dreams. Saint-Tropez has a citadel that sits high up on the hill above the town. It's the perfect place to go and catch some magical views, especially at sunset or sunrise. I like this kind of rustic road, footpath, whatever that is. I feel like that's usually a good sign at a place when it's not fully, like, perfect, if you know what I mean. The nearest airport to Saint-Tropez is Toulon, 50 minutes. Alternatively, there is Nice Airport, which is 90 minutes away. Reaching Saint-Tropez by public transport is a little harder as there is no train station, although you can take a train from Nice to the nearest station, St. Raphael, and then from there you can take a taxi to St. Tropez. Day 6, Cannes or Antibes. Known for the Cannes Film Festival, the city is often in the spotlight as a place for celebrities, bringing in a certain exclusivity. However, it's still a charming port town, and there are ways to enjoy it without breaking the bank. That's good to know. There are lots of great free things to do, from visiting the famous weekly market to finding murals in the old town. You can also stand in the same spot as some of your favourite actors by visiting the Palais de Festival where you can see the red carpet and the Walk of Fame, or as an alternative to can visit Antibes. They didn't really say a lot about can here, but I know there's more to do in can, even if it's just walking around and enjoying the streets and the food, because I've seen other vlogs. That's kind of why I chose to do the video on South France. Reach Cannes from Saint-Tropez by car in two hours or by train from Nice in under half an hour. Day 7 to 8, Nice, French Riviera. Nice is true to its name, one of the nicest cities in our French Riviera travel guide, sandwiched between the majestic Alps and the dazzling blue of the Mediterranean Sea. It's no surprise that Nice is one of the most popular places to visit on the Côte d'Azur. As a seaside city, one of the best things to do here is to visit the many beaches. Follow the Promenade des Anglais, a long boulevard that follows the sea. Although it looks like there is one long stretch of beach, it's actually split up into 30 different beaches, some private, some public, for you to choose from. The 
that looks really cool, but it takes a lot to impress me when it comes to beaches. It kind of looks like there's stones instead of sand. In the evening, take a picnic with the food you've bought at the market and head to the top of Castle Hill. Here you'll discover panoramic views out across Nice and the surrounding coastline. It's the perfect place to sit as the sun goes down. Nice is oozing with history. One of the most unusual historical buildings is the Russian Orthodox Cathedral, known as one of the most impressive of its type outside of Russia itself. Many people choose to base themselves in Nice for the entire duration of their stay on the French Riviera, as it's such a good location to get to all the other delights of the Côte d'Azur. It's also got loads of great accommodation options for a variety of prices. Whether it's beachside or in the historic centre, there's something for every kind of traveller. Nice has an international airport, so it's very easy to get to from all over the world. Trains from Cannes to Nice run regularly and take about 35 minutes. Day 9, Villefranche-sur-Mer. Villefranche-sur-Mer is the hidden gem of the French Riviera. It's much quieter than some of the more popular neighbouring cities and towns on the coastline, this adds to its charm. Every old building has been beautifully preserved and it's so picturesque that it's been the setting for many famous films. I love these little alleys. The old town is the must-see on your trip to villefranche sur mer and you could easily spend a few hours getting lost in the narrow, cobbled streets. Grab your camera and enjoy finding all the beautiful details of the colourful townhouses, painted shutters and hanging flowers. There are even some spooky surprises when stumbling across the Rue Obscure, a 13th century passageway that goes under the old town. Finish your day at the Plage des Mariniers. This is a beautiful bay with perfect water for swimming, which looks across to the old colourful town. Most people choose to visit Villefranche on a day trip from Nice. However, if you have time to extend your itinerary, it's well worth slowing down in this charming town. There are plenty of great accommodation options beachside, or you can find pretty apartments in the old town. The train from Nice only takes a few minutes and costs two euros. This makes it the perfect day trip. Alternatively, it's also a great base to explore the rest of the French Riviera, as it's quieter and less crowded. is an independent state that's so beautiful it's become an exclusive holiday destination for the rich and famous. There are grand houses, villas and even a palace to see on a day trip to Monaco. Spend your morning exploring the city, your afternoon relaxing on the beautiful beach and the evening enjoying the legendary nightlife. Take a train from Nice to Monaco in under half an hour you can also drive in around 30 minutes, but beware, the parking is very expensive. Wow, look at that. Day 11 to 12, Monton, Pearl of the French Riviera. Monton is known as the Pearl of the French Riviera, and for good reason. The town has a beauty that's postcard worthy. Pastel-coloured houses, terracotta roofs, and gardens of lemon trees. I love how they paint the houses like that. 
Best of all, it's thought to be one of the warmest places on the coastline, with over 316 days of sunshine a year. This means it's the perfect place to visit the French Riviera at any time of year, and it's the perfect place to grow lemons. The town is very proud of this, and you can find every type of lemon product imaginable. There's even a lemon festival held every year at the end of February. Just like Nice, there are plenty of town beaches to choose from. The ones to the east, towards Italy, are the sandier ones and a great place to relax after a day of wandering the steep streets of the gorgeous old town. Monton is so close to the border of Italy that it can feel more Italian than French. Hello pizza, pasta and gelato. It's small but perfectly formed, and anywhere in this beautiful town is a good place to stay. It's particularly nice to choose from one of the hotels to look out over the sea and wake up to beautiful views. From Nice, it only takes 40 minutes, and it's a beautiful train ride. So, there's just one more blog that I was hoping to look through. At this stage, it's probably going to be repeating some of what I've already read, but just in case there's any other bits that haven't been mentioned yet. Also, it has some more photographs. This blog is called Neverending Footsteps. There's another view of that structure that I saw before. This structure here, which looks pretty amazing. You just never see anything like that in Australia. Palais Longchamp. It's a grand 19th century palace which celebrates the construction of the Canal de Massé. The palace now boasts a beautiful park, two museums, and a garden oasis. Not only is the Natural History Museum free, but it's filled with hundreds of thousands of botanical, fossil, and mineral specimens, which will keep you busy for hours. If you want to skip the museum, you can enjoy a relaxing stroll around the grounds during the morning sunshine. That sounds a bit better to me. Afterwards, take the train to Onsuez La Redon. This gorgeous little village is a complete hidden gem and my absolute favourite spot to visit when I want to escape the business of Marseille. When you arrive at the station, follow the winding path downhill to the main village and settle in at the Plage de la Redon. Soak up the warm Mediterranean sunshine, read a book and explore the nearby hidden coves on a rented paddleboard or kayak. After a few hours, get ready for a well-deserved afternoon hike. Sentier du Littoral is my top pick, having hiked it many times during my weekends in X. It's not too strenuous and takes around three hours to complete. Along the way, discover what the hidden coves look like from above, experience stunning cliffs and even an ancient fort. The dramatic contrast between the blue of the ocean and the deep hues of the wilderness and pines makes for excellent photos. It's also Aix en Provence. It's 11 minutes from Marseille. Before any tours or recommendations, the first thing I want you to do is go on and explore through the centre of this colourful city. Getting lost amidst the narrow streets, finding local hidden gems and taking in the wonderful architecture on your way is a sheer pleasure and will inspire how you want to spend your time here. 
Another free yet amazing thing to do in X is visit Church Saint John of Malta, the first Gothic church to be built in the Provence region. The church's facade is truly spectacular, adorned with intricate stone carvings, striking arches, and a magnificent rose window. Here's the lavender fields they were talking That'd be nice. I'd like to go there. They were talking about that before as well. Kalonk. Look at this picture here. That's on Teeb. That looks amazing. On Teeb is a town that I simply can't get enough of. Begin your day by taking a leisurely stroll through the vibrant Marche Provençal. Immerse yourself in the hustle and bustle of the market and delight your senses with the aroma of fresh herbs and spices wafting through the air. Sample a variety of delicious local cheeses, meats, and fresh produce to energize you for the day ahead. After all that cheesy goodness, make your way to the Musée Picasso, located in the stunning Chateau Grimaldi. This place is not only great for admiring the collection of works by the famed artist, but the medieval castle itself is just as impressive. If you want another great museum, I recommend the History and Archaeology Museum. What really sets this museum apart is the way it brings history to life through interactive exhibits and interesting multimedia displays. Is that nice? What else have we got? That's Menton. That looks beautiful. So I might wrap it up here, guys. I hope I did an okay job pronouncing all those names. I have a feeling that I really butchered a lot of them, but you get the idea anyway. Yeah, and I hope you learned a thing or two about France. I know I did. It's pretty glamorous place to go, which could be nice, but I, I like that there's little quiet towns to go to as well and trying all the food would be fun just seems like a very beautiful place to visit so i hope you like this one guys and yeah let me know if there's any areas you want me to look into otherwise thank you for tuning in as usual and i will see you next time